Liar, liar, pants on fire. There's probably a rest to that, but I don't know what it is. This video is the first of five part installment titled The Five Lies of Depression. So if you've ever struggled with depression, anxiety, overwhelmed, all because of a thought that you believed, check this out because we're gonna be identifying the five lies of depression and how you can reframe your beliefs, experience better emotions and produce better results. Check it out. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Daryl Stinson, your speaker, coach, and purpose architect. And I'm so excited that you're joining me today for this first installment of a five-part series titled The Five Lies of Depression. I don't know if you know this or not, but depression a lot of times is a war that we fight in our mind. And yes, I am a person who has been clinically diagnosed with depression, self-diagnosed with ADHD, probably diagnosed with some other stuff that I haven't even got tested for yet as it relates to mental health. Uh, I don't got like an STD or anything. So uh, I know that was inappropriate, but just want to let you know, like I'm cool. Wife is fine. We're all good. But sometimes uh, depression is majority like a, a mental battle. That's why one of the practices to reframe your beliefs and to uh, lower the amount of depression episodes that you experience or anxiety episodes that you experience is to use a method called cognitive restructuring which is like it's it's taking your thoughts and figuring out how to think differently so that then you feel differently, behave differently, and experience different results. And so that's one of the methods that we're talking about today as we deal with these lies that circle through our mind. How do we uh, use cognitive restructuring to think better thoughts that produce better feelings that lead to the better results that we want in life? Okay, so the first lie is the lie that no one really cares about you and that you don't matter. This is a lie. I remember when I first got done playing uh, Division One athletics, you know, I ended my career a year early because of a back injury. And I remember like looking at my phone to check it because I was used to it ringing all the time and having to deal with the silence because I was no longer in the spotlight as a, excuse, spotlight. I was no longer in the spotlight as an athlete was devastating. Like, I remember just looking at my phone, scrolling through, like, is my phone, like, notifications turned off? Is it on silent? Because I was so used to that thing ringing and ringing and ringing. None of my teammates were calling me, checking in on me, seeing how I was doing. None of my coaches were reaching out to me, seeing how my family was doing. I didn't have any media hit me up wanting to do an interview, asking me about an upcoming game or a previous game. Like, it seemed to me as if no one really cared about me. And then my family was always there. I've always ha been blessed to have like a really solid family. But I personally felt like they just cared about me because they had to, not because there was necessarily anything special about me that they should care about. And even they were calling less because they wouldn't have to coordinate travel to my games or they, they, you know, they didn't see me play on national television. And so they stopped calling and texting as much. And that like validated this insecurity that I had and this lie that I was believing that no one really liked me. They only liked my gift. Hmm. So it might be different for you. Yours might not be your athletic ability. For me, it was. But for you, it may be that everyone likes you because you are the, the class clown and you've always got jokes and you've developed that sense of identity. And now, like when you don't do jokes anymore, people don't uh, hit you up. They don't really want to uh, be friends with you or invite you out to special parties. And so now you can start to have feelings of depression and because you've experienced a form of rejection that says like, hey, man, uh, we only like you when you perform for us. Daryl, we only like you because we, we saw you on national television. Daryl, we only like you because we look up to how good of an athlete you are, but we don't like the real you. And whenever you're talented at something, uh, whether it's music, whether it's writing, whether it's administrative skills, science, research, being uh, around children, it doesn't matter. Whatever your, your, your skill, your superpower is, it's hard oftentimes for people to see beyond that gift and to see you. And that can create this uh, feeling of who's for me, who's not 
really for me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know who's who really cares about me and who only is interested in me because I've got a platform, because I've got influence, because I've got a, 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 a successful business or whatever it is that I have. And those feelings uh, not only cause depression, but they can produce anxiety, causing you to want to perform even more to keep their attention, uh, to, to, to grab their attention and keep it is what I should have said. And I don't want you to live like that. You don't have to live that way. You can actually be fully known and fully loved. And I think that's the 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 sticking point there. I think that uh, a lot of people only know our gift and they don't know us. And we can blame that on them and say, man, don't just go up to athletes and ask for autographs. Don't just go to uh, successful business people and ask for money. Don't just go to musicians and ask them to sing. Don't just ask people for their talent and their gift. Ask them about them. But here's the problem is we, as the person who's struggling with depression and anxiety and whatever other mental health challenges you're having, we have a responsibility to be vulnerable because that is what creates a more connected society is vulnerability. And the more vulnerable I am, the more love I attract. I always say it this way, that vulnerability is like a Batman signal for love. Whenever you're feeling overwhelmed, whenever you're feeling like no one really cares about you, you don't matter. People only love you for your gift. Ask yourself a challenging question. When's the last time I was vulnerable? When's the last time I told someone how I was really feeling about how I feel they feel about me? There's too many feelings in that. But when's the last time I told somebody how I really feel? Like, Using the actual words that describe the emotion that I'm feeling, not a surface level emotion. Um, um, let people know that you feel like they don't care about you. Let people know that you feel alone. Let people know that you don't feel like no one really is interested in, in you as a person, that they only want to know about your gift, your talent, your skill. Like have a real honest conversation with people so that you can open yourself up to experience the love that they're going to share with you. Versus just calling somebody and be like, man, I haven't heard from you in a long time, what you forgot about me. And we're joking about things that we're going home at night crying about. Listen, don't joke about things that you're going at home at night crying about. That doesn't make sense. Why would you joke about something that uh, during the day that's causing you sleeplessness and anxiety and overwhelm during the night? No, you need to be honest about your real struggle because when people see the real deal, they actually do care because you really do matter. And don't let the silence that you hear right now, uh, the rejection that you're experiencing right now, people who are out there in the world who only care about your gift and don't care a lick about you, don't let those people in no circumstances keep you from being a more vulnerable, emotionally healthy person. It's not good for any of us to bottle in these emotions of feeling lonely and depressed and anxious and overwhelmed like we don't matter no one cares about us people don't really know who we are like that is a waste of your time my time society's time when instead we can break through that pattern and model vulnerability so i want you to try that this week i want you to reach out to a friend that you may have and be a little vulnerable right you don't got to be a victim but be vulnerable say and I don't know, man, I, every time someone calls me, it's always for me to do something for them. And I, I don't really feel like I matter. I don't really feel like they actually care about me. Like they don't like me. They just like what I can do for them. And every time I try to take a chance and talk to somebody about it, I mean, they're kind of short. They give me surface level generic answers. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm feeling like, What's the point of me living, you know? Watch how the love of a mother or a father or a friend or a colleague or an associate or an employee, watch how their their, their, their love meter kicks in and go, no, I care about you. Because let me tell you something, there's times where there's people in my life who I adore, I care about, but I don't talk about or talk to very often, but they're always in my heart. They're always in my mind. And if we circumstances were different and we would live closer together, or if, you know, we were at a conference, like I would give them my time if our paths cross, but because, you know, we're not 
you know, attending the same church or we're not, you know, going to the same community meetings or we're not sitting on the same boards or leading the same nonprofit organization, whatever, because we're not working together, living together, playing together anymore. I, I don't reach out to them as much as I probably could or should. And I don't like that word should because I don't feel like I should, you know, it's just that I didn't, I don't know what that those particular people in my life who I know, but don't talk to often, who I care about, but don't talk to often. I don't know that, um, that they're going through a tough time, but I guarantee you this, if they were to reach out to me vulnerably, I guarantee you, they will find out that they matter. I guarantee you they will find out that I actually really do care about them. And I will say something that has to do with them and not their gifts and not um, for what I can get from them. And this is this is like, I wish people could understand this more because I've I've even had people like uh, come up to me and say, Daryl, you know, uh, man, you know, I, I wanted to reach out to you, but I knew you were busy. And I'm like, hold on a second. I protect my time for you, not from you. And that was a lesson that my mentor taught me. Like you protect your time for the people you love, not from the people you love. So yeah, I have boundaries. Don't hit me up at midnight. You know, don't, you know, don't call me while I'm in the middle of a work block or, or, or if you call me, leave a message or, you know, don't just pop up at my house unexpected or unannounced. Like I've got boundaries like that, but, but those boundaries are not to keep people that I love out. They're to keep people who don't really love me out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so people who I don't love as much, I guess. Uh, and, I, and I say that knowing I love everybody. But, you know, there's degrees to uh, the levels of access that people have to your life. And so a lot of times those people think that they can't call me or reach out to me. And I'm like, you can call me. You can reach out to me. Um, and especially if you're reaching out to me in a vulnerable state, it's like it's like more alarming. If you're just trying to catch up and talk for two hours about what's been going on in each other's life. I don't always have two hours for my hundred friends, but if, if you need two hours or an hour or 30 minutes, because you're like struggling with depression and you have no one to talk to and you don't, you don't, you don't know who to reach out to. And, and you just feel like, you know, in addition to your counselor, you want some like flesh on flesh, like another voice, another person to talk to you, like reach out to me. Right. And I'm, and I'm talking about me and my relationships, but the same is true with you and yours. Like just, Look at your relationships in this healthy way of like, man, I'm not going to sit here and tell myself this false story that no one really likes me and that I don't matter just because people haven't checked in on me in a while. Like they may still very much care about you a lot, but they just don't know what you're going through. And it is your responsibility. Yes, in a depressed state, your responsibility. Yes, in an anxiety state. Yes, your responsibility in an overwhelmed state. Your responsibility in a, 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 a even a suicidal uh, state of mind. It's your responsibility to reach out and let people know that you're struggling. Vulnerability is a bad man's signal for love. The more vulnerable you are about how you really feel, the stronger signal it sends to the world to let love know that it needs to rush in. And I am going to preach that until the day that I take my last breath because vulnerability is not a weakness. It is a strength. And we know that, but we also know that people don't act like that, that we think it's a cliche and it's not a cliche. It's, it's a, it's a fact. <laughs> It's a fact that vulnerability truly is a superpower. It takes more strength to be vulnerable than it does to pretend like everything is okay. So just be vulnerable. Let your guards down. Yes, you open yourself up to somebody, you know, not get, returning the love that you feel like you need. Yes, you run that risk. But I'd rather be real and be rejected than to be fake and be accepted. I'd rather be real and experience that pain of them not fulfilling my needs as much than to bottle everything in and go through life pretending that I'm okay and people buying into my act. So remember, here's the truth to the lie that no one really cares about you and that you don't matter. The truth is this, you do matter. You matter so much that I created a whole apparel line called You Matter. Check it out. It's on my Shopify store. Just go to darylstenson.com, click on the shop, You'll go right to the shirt. You can. I should have worn my You Matter shirt. Why didn't I wear my? Drop the ball, Daryl. You matter. You really do matter. You matter to your friends. You matter to your colleagues. 
you matter to me. You matter to me. And I care about you because you're a human, because there's only one person that's like you. There will never be another person like you. You are one of one. And I'm in your corner and I believe in you. And if anything in this video has triggered you, made you have suicidal thoughts, um, made you go into a mental health episode of anxiety or depression or something else, I want you to reach out to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, uh, reach out to our partner, BetterHelp, and I want you to begin the journey of, of learning a new truth, of restructuring the lie that no one really cares about you and that you don't matter to this declaration. People do care about me and I do matter. And I'm strong enough, confident enough to be vulnerable. All right. Hey, listen, I hope that you enjoyed that video. That is the first of five installments of the five lies of depression. Next week, we're going to be talking about the second lie of depression. If you want to know what the second lie of depression is, go ahead and type right now in the chat. Second lie, second lie, second lie. If you're watching this and all the videos are already up, then you're probably just going to go binge watch the rest of the videos. That's okay. I want you to watch it all, but I want you more importantly to implement it all. And I want you to connect with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, make sure you reach out to us. Join our Speaking Made Profitable Facebook group if you're interested in getting into public speaking. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you get notified every single time a video goes live. We release a new video every Friday and we want you to access this life-changing information and help us to spread it to others. So lastly, I would appreciate it if you would go ahead right now before you log off, click that share button and share with someone you know who share with your social media uh, accounts and let all your followers and social media stalkers, let them know that they matter and that they don't have to believe this lie. In fact, that is your declaration to them that they matter is by sharing this and saying, listen, I want you to read this and listen to these words that he's saying, just in case you haven't been being vulnerable and telling me how you really feel. I want you to know that you matter. Wow, you can be an ambassador of that message in this movement. I appreciate you. Love you dearly. Talk soon. Peace.